Hello and welcome to another video. So I'm going to wrap up my Zoran OS review. So I've spent a few days using Zoran OS Ultimate as my primary operating system on both my laptop and my desktop. I started the review process by installing just on my laptop, like I usually do when reviewing an operating system or distribution. But with Zoran OS Ultimate, your purchase also includes the Lite Ultimate version. So with this, I've decided to install the Lite version onto my laptop and the regular version onto my desktop. So throughout this video, I will refer to both versions. Installing Zoran OS Ultimate was straightforward and anyone should be able to follow the steps without too much difficulty. You'll be able to choose whether you want to have a minimal or normal installation as well as you'd like to download updates or software for some of your hardware. There's also a checkbox on whether you would like to participate in their census program. I've decided to opt out. After setting your region and user account, installation took roughly 20 minutes. Your time will vary depending on your particular setup. The Lite version uses XFCE as its desktop environment, and Zoran OS does a really good job of making it look and feel more modern. Like the regular Ultimate version, it also comes with some pre-configured desktop layouts which you can change using Zoran Appearance, as well as the icons and theming. Unlike the regular Ultimate version which uses GNOME as a desktop environment, there are only four desktop layouts to choose from. The layout that is supposed to mimic the look and feel of Mac moves your panel to the top and creates a second panel at the bottom to launch and minimise applications from, like a dock. I personally think this could have been done a whole lot better. You could have installed a program like Plank, and instead of using an SFC panel with Docbar X, you could then have it implement Plank at the bottom. Think about the Make Desktop and the different layouts and how they do it over there. Out of all the desktop layouts, I find myself using the default layout the most when using SFCE. When I'm using GNOME, I jump between the default look and Mac OS look and feel as the dock at the bottom is basically dash to dock, which looks perfect with the rest of the desktop. I didn't find myself using any other layouts much. The default Zoran OS theming is actually rather nice and clean and can switch to dark and light modes using the Zoran appearance package. You can also schedule it to change from light to dark according to the time of day. The only thing I really changed here are the icons. This is just a personal preference as I prefer a more square icon pack like Arc Icons or Mocha. Now I did have some unfortunate screen tearing after a fresh install on both Zoran Ultimate and Zoran Ultimate Lite. That was fixed by creating a comp file in Xorg, but this is an issue I usually always encounter when using an Ubuntu 18.04 distribution. However, with Ubuntu 19.10, that issue for me at least went away without any additional configuration needed. While I was using the Ultimate version, which uses GNOME, I installed GNOME Tweaks, which allowed me to see some of the work Zorin OS had done in terms of extensions. Some of these extensions include Zorin Dash, Zorin Menu, Zorin Panel, etc. And it's these extensions that were utilised when switching layouts in GNOME. Zorin OS contains near enough everything a user should need straight out of the box and ready to go. This includes the LibreOffice suite which includes a competent word processor among other Office productivity programs. The email client it comes installed within the Ultimate version is Evolution. That coupled with GNOME Online accounts has enabled me to use Office 365 servers including email, notes, tasks and calendar all from within one window. On the Lite version it comes with Thunderbird as your default email and client instead of Evolution. Both versions ship with Caden Live, which is my go-to video editor in Linux, so a big thumbs up there. It also comes with the image editor GIMP. It comes with Blender, which is a 3D creating program, Synfig Studio, which you can use to create animations, and to keep you safe and give you peace of mind, it comes installed with Deja to handle backups. It comes with Arda 5 Audacity. Both versions also come pre-installed with VirtualBox, which is a program to create and manage virtual machines. It ships with Firefox as a default web browser as well as transmission for your torrents and a whole host of other applications to keep you busy. And of course, being based on Ubuntu means you should be able to find most of your favourite packages without too much hassle. Flatpak and Snap support is also included by default and can be installed from the software store. The games it comes installed with are fun, mainly casual games that will kill 20 minutes here and there. The games I enjoyed the most were Extreme Tux Racer and a game that reminds me of Worms. So there's quite a few games available here, but if you're into serious gaming, these won't really do, and you're going to want to install Steam or Lutris to download your favourite titles there. But for the casual gamer, there is more than enough here to keep you entertained intermittently. Zorin Connect is an application that allows you to share notifications with your Android phone, and perform such tasks as reply to text messages and mount your phone's file system. Another handy feature is the ability to input remote commands. 
This program is included in both the free and the ultimate versions of Zorin. From what I can tell, it's an implementation of KDE Connect with a couple of in-house tweaks to fit with the overall distribution. Performance-wise, I have absolutely no complaints. Starting up and shutting down was super fast, and using both versions of Zorin OS Ultimate were swift and easy to use. My only complaint in this area is the version of GNOME isn't that recent, and there have been many improvements in the most recent versions of GNOME that Zorin OS Ultimate misses out on. However, both versions kept up with every task I threw at them and suffered no game breaking freezes or crashes. My final thoughts on Zorin Ultimate is that as an overall package which includes Zorin OS Ultimate, Zorin OS Ultimate Lite and a 32-bit version of Zorin OS Ultimate is that the team have done some brilliant work here shipping a well packaged operating system that will attract some of those users that are fleeing from Windows 7. I think they have done particularly good work on the light version, managing to port their look and feel from GNOME over to XFCE without too much change. Both versions are built on top of a stable Ubuntu release, so you shouldn't have too many issues stability-wise and updating should work flawlessly. The pre-configured desktop layouts provide an easy way to change your look and feel to suit the individual workflow, and the selection of programs pre-installed will meet most users' needs. Whether it is worth spending money on or not is largely up to who is going to be using it. Sure, it's easy for me to say a similar desktop could be achieved without spending a penny, but not all of us out there like to do that heavy lifting. So if you're someone who doesn't like spending time tweaking your system, but wants something visually appealing with everything you need ready from the first time you turn your computer on, this is the distribution for you. If you like the overall look and feel of Zorin OS Ultimate, but rather set it up your own way, then the free core version is probably best suited for you. Thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.